Long live the queen. Ho! Episode. Episode. I just yesterday saw um, the video by the Walker Brothers, their vlog about the last episode, and uh, they were like, uh, whoa, this, <laughs> this show isn't playing everything safe in this season so far, it's not bad, but it's not really uh, raising the bar or taking risks, but, whew, this episode. Um, and the funny thing is I <laughs> actually had a more and more um, casual uh, opening planned. Uh, I mean, it's still unscripted, but I'm having ideas in my head. So, uh, uh, I was like, <laughs> the final... Come on, guys. Am I the only one who sees this final scene and is like... Coming a fire lord, the head of the Bathing Say police and the chief of the Southern Water tribe into a bar in the desert. This is like the opening for a dozen of amazing jokes. So please, everybody, wa write your version of this joke down in the comments below. And uh, you know what? I, I will make a video with uh, the jokes that start out with um, the, the, the what's the fire lord, the head of the uh, um, uh, police, the, the, the um, Republic City Police, and the Southern Water Tribe chief uh, coming into a bar and pop, come on, uh, ellipse, 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 whatever happens then. Um, there, and I want to see a few good jokes. Uh, why do I put my This is like the Ask series. I'm doing it again. Nevertheless, um, <laughs> it was just... I, I, I saw the scene coming in there and I was like, really, three of the highest ranking members of the world are just casually sitting in this backwater oasis tavern around a table and be like... <laughs> okay, um, the ridiculousness of this... Or the... the, the Seriality of this certain scene aside, where do I begin? Okay, let's let's go over a few small things and let's keep the big one for the end. Um, first of all, how the hell did the Earth Queen forces those four dudes in an airship ever capture Korra? Um, yes, I know they probably had a few ground forces there, like in the soldiers, and they did the actual capturing, and they were just the delivery guys. But am I the only one who sees this gigantic airship? Crashing down and be like, hmm, okay, there are four fucking members to guard the Avatar. When they had ground forces and they were a reasonable military, they would have brought all these forces with them in their standing guard, having their rocks ready to punch the Avatar if she should escape. She is the most powerful being on the fucking planet. So, yeah, this was... A Okay, I, I, I can't see it from a producer standpoint. Just having those four dudes makes it a um, uh, lot less stuff to animate and uh, because every character needs to be animated and it's, it's a cost efficiency thingy. And for the narrative, it didn't really matter if there are four dudes or 400 dudes. It's like, okay, we see them, they bond, the avatar is kind of uh, uh, showing them that she is not evil and they are just in the end like, oh, that's over my paycheck. Ha ha ha, you duke it out, uh, you big guys. Um, so, uh, this doesn't really matter, but it was just stro striking me as so weird. Also, yes, I get it, the whole bonding thingy going on, but having actual... being so short of having a montage of how they repair the airship. I mean, okay, in the end they have only the one scene where Korra bends the sand away, and then the other scene where Asami is already fi uh, doing the last few fixes, but it still felt so, <laughs> like... Having a montage, uh, working together, building an airship, and a big giant spirit monster destroys it. What? <laughs> this, this just rendered this entire development pointless, because after that, what do they do? They stick together and bond and build a sand bender. So they do the exact same twice. It was just so... Why? <laughs> okay, probably to build suspension for the gigantic monster, because first they only saw the thing in the background, then... It actually attacked and showed them, whoop, oh, it's a real threat. And then in the end they had the epic chase scene. I don't know, it was not so epic. Uh, nevertheless, also Korra's line like, this isn't a spirit. What the fuck is this thing if it is not a spirit? I mean, we have seen gigantic monstrous spirits that also are not glowy and uh, seem rather physical. Like the panda in uh, the original series. He was a spirit and once he was not in his um, destructive, f destructive form but in his panda form, he looked, he was just a gigantic panda and he was a spirit. Nobody doubted this was a spirit but 
giant fish diving through sand? No, not a spirit. So, huh? I, I, I just trust that Cora is probably not an expert on spirits. And if Genora would have been share there, she would have been like, No, Cora, this is a spirit. Shut up. You are maybe the avatar, but you have no clue what you're talking about. Um, actually, I took notes again. And I'm glad I did, because this, this episode was full of stuff. Uh... A small thing uh, about Bolin. Um, uh, first of all, I, I liked his. <laughs> got the, the opening scene with him and uh, the Red Lotus, and he's like, how oh, bonding and being like, oh, and then and, then, uh, 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 and the masters came when you were ten, and there's a secret uh, attraction between the two of you, and he's like, hey, that's cool. This is just so Bolin. He is comic relief, but not in a stupid way. He. He, he has this weird way of seeing the world, this innocent, childlike way, and he's act I mean, he's... Keep, keep him and the Red Lotus in the van for a few more days, and he will actually turn them or the other way around, or there will be some kind of connection. Uh, I know that this was basically just a, a one-scene joke thrown in there, giving a tiny bit of characterization for the, the Lava Bender and the Water Girl, maybe? Uh, I, by the way, I have the feeling that since they get a few lines, um, so far they have not really been fleshed out. They are more the henchmen to uh, Zaheer. Uh, and the few lines they get actually give them a little bit of character, but they will probably stay henchmen. Um, yeah, but not much you can do about it, I guess. Uh, it's... Uh, uh, in, in the nature, how those characters... This, this, the show has only a limited number of episodes. Those episodes are only 20 minutes long. And fleshing out all the characters, it can be done. It has been done in the past. In the past, they did not add characters. Uh, I'm talking, of course, about the original series. But yeah, I'm trying not to compare them too much. Um, it is possible to introduce so many new characters and give each a moment to shine. For example, cut the second building stuff montage in the desert and give them a little bit more of inter-team dialogue while they're here spying on the queen or something. Uh, Lynn was a nice detective. was nice to see that she's actually competent. And I guess I cannot avoid the big one anymore. Like, uh, what is this? Oh, 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 I have another small one. When did airbending become the most brutal force of bending? I mean, back, the, back in the days, earth, earth bending was a crushing thing. Fire bending was like burning things. Even water bending was slicing when it got turned into uh, the more uh, icy stuff. And air bending was always like getting people out of balance and maybe let them trip over. And now it is the root force Zahir uses to bash people around, it's a root force core uses to destroy the entire uh, keyboard in the um, airship, the, the, all the controls, by bashing the people with airbending. With airbending, okay, airbending is the only one you, you don't need material for, so it kind of makes sense that in this room she uses airbending instead of all the other stuff. I mean, she doesn't want to burn the people, so uh, it's only one option left, but she is like, BAM, airbending. <laughs> what? The... the, the Airbending is a brute force? This is kind of weird and... Well, this is not how I remember it from the original series. Oh, god damn it! I really need to stop this. Anyways, the big one. Holy mother of uh, airbending fuck. Um, okay, we do not... We haven't seen the, um, the final death scene of the Earth Queen. Um, I can only imagine that she is implied to be dead. Uh, I mean, he basically uh, took the breath out of her lungs. I mean, this is how I interpret this air bending coming out there. For a moment I was like, is he bending her spirit out? But then it turned into this air bubble around her head. So I guess it is uh, the literal version of taking the breath out of her lungs. Um, this is not the first death we had in Avatar. I mean, we had uh, Monkiatsu in the original show, who we saw his skeleton off, which was rather, uh, well, kids' show and stuff. I mean, they, they made it a drawing, uh, like, like a, uh, they didn't make it in the animation style, they made it as part of the backdrop, uh, to probably take a little bit of the um, 
concreteness out of it. But uh, they showed his corpse, so surrounded by a lot of other corpse, but in this little bit artsy style, probably to take a little bit of the death theme out of it. Um, but yeah, they did this. Uh, then we have Jet in Basing Se, which never... I mean, I believe I heard that it was confirmed by the producers that he did not survive, but it was... All the signs were like, okay, this is his final moment, this is his death scene. Uh, even so, they never ma showed it too explicit on the show, understandable. We are still dealing with a rather young audience. Um, and now we have the Earth Queen. And uh, the Earth Queen, like, like showing her eyes and close up with this... this uh, uh, white uh, white angle lens look uh, uh, how the her eyes turned red uh, from the the, the, the veins uh, uh, her suffering view this 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 went this went on for I don't know twenty seconds or something which is really long in um, film close up uh, or thingies and um. I, I can kind of see them step back a little bit in a future episode by showing her in a catatonic state in some kind of hospital. Uh, that he did not actually kill her, even so. It, sometimes I really have to ask uh, uh, kids show producers, what is more gruesome? I mean, yes, you don't show death, but you show... Like, for example, with the, the true seer guy in the last episode. Oh no, he is not dead. He will only suffer for eternity in the fog of lost souls. Uh, this might be the preferable fate to this. Just saying. I mean, uh, no matter if you are religious and believe in an afterlife, which he never gets this way, or if you are uh, of, of the uh, it's all over when you die uh, sign of thing, eternal suffering is always the worst choice. I mean, we're talking about eternal suffering. Um, so yeah, uh, and, and, and with a, a catatonic state, okay, it's not eternal, but it's also like, uh, yeah, <laughs> this is so much... Uh, better than living uh, for a few more decades while not actually living, just being there, being a bunch of living flesh without a, a mind inside or a soul inside or whatever. This is also rather gruesome, so I'm not really sure if I, I really... I, I I guess I would prefer if they keep it, keep it awake and just leave her out of the picture and refer to the events as a takedown and we do not get a, a confirmation either way. But... As it is right now, it was a really graphic version of uh, uh, killing her by, uh, uh, um, what's it called when you take somebody's air uh, away? Sophisticate, suffer, air loss, dying by air loss or suffering by air loss. God damn it, I really need all my vocabulary. Foreign language, still reminding you guys. Um, oh God, I will have. How many comments will I have tell me? Okay, I'm, I'm looking it up right now in the dictionary just so I don't get the dozen comments about... Uh, 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 suffoca suffocate. Suffocation. Suffocation. So, there you go. Suffocation. Uh, if she died by suffocation or not, it's kind of let... I, I, I mean, it's like the end of um, uh, Inception. It's not a real spoiler, so you can still watch. They took, the, they kept the shot long enough so you are not entirely sure where they, what it's meant to be. So it's left a little bit open, probably because they probably implied that she is dead, but they left it open enough so parents can tell her children, no, no, he, he, she was just very, very tired. Um, I guess that's my theory about this scene, but yeah. <laughs> Walker Brothers, not taking risks. This, as I said, there have been death scenes before, but this was the most graphic and most explicit one I have seen so far on the show. Um, so, yeah. Uh, very, very interesting episode. It had a few parts like the, the, the bonding with the airship crew and repairing twice, and in the end, it's only those four guys, and in the end they are just, oh, that's over my paycheck, we're out of here. This was kind of like filler within an otherwise tense episode. Um, but yeah, Korra is on her run. Uh, we apparently get a lot of more action with Suko 
Um, her, 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 what's her father's name? Um, this guy, um, Tan Tanrock, and uh, Lin. So we have a new, very strong team avatar. Can't wait to see them in action. So yeah, I'm 